Hi there, welcome to spreadsheet solving. In our video today, we are going to conduct a hypothesis test. Now, if you haven't already, take a look at our prior video, our prior post on how to conduct or design an experiment, because that will form the basis of our hypothesis test. As a quick way of background, the experiment that we designed tested or attempts to answer this question. What is the impact of organic soil on a seedling's height? So in very specifically, the question we want to answer is, is the height success rate for seedlings grown in organic soil significantly larger than the non-organically grown group? Now the height success rate is what we define as a height of a seedling that's greater than 25 millimeters after 30 days of being planted. Okay, so given that we're looking at a success rate, we're looking at proportions, we're thinking about proportions. So the appropriate test we're going to look at is the two sample, because we've got the organic group and the non-organic group, we're looking at the two sample Z test of proportions. Okay, so now we've defined the question, we've defined our test. It is very important that whenever we have a statistical test, and we go through this in our game plan, is we want to test the assumptions and conditions. And the great thing is we can do this in a Google spreadsheet. So I'm going to hop into our spreadsheet. And here we are in this section called conditions for inference. Now for this particular test, there are two conditions that we want to see whether our sample set passes. And the two conditions are one, we want to ensure, ensure that our samples are independent and random. So if we have some sort of random assignment, then this condition will pass. And in our case, if you go back and look at our experimental design, we assigned the soil type to the ceiling randomly using a random coin toss. So in our case, because we do have random assignment, we have passed this first condition. Our samples are independent and random. Okay, so on to the second condition. Do we have a sufficiently large sample size? And the way we test this is as follows. If the number of successes, in other words, a success is defined as a height success rate or the proportion or the number of seedlings whose height exceeds 25 millimeters after 30 days of being planted, is the number of successes in your group greater than or equal than to 10? Same. Is the number of successes greater than or equal to 10 in group B or the non-organic soil? Second set, are the number of, is the number of failures in each group greater than or equal to 10? So we have four parts that we need to test. The success, the failure of group A, the success and failure of group B. If each of those is greater than or equal to 10, then we have a sufficiently large sample size. Okay, so we have collected our data here on this tab. And we're able now to use the count if function to pull in the number of seedlings in the organic group and the number of seedlings in the non-organic group. So I'm going to just focus on the orga organic group because everything we do in group A or the organic group, we will do exactly for group B and we'll see whether the condition holds. So using the count if function, we can see that the number of seedlings with a height greater than 25 millimeters is 25 using the count if function. So we've got 25 number of successes, which indeed is greater than 10. This is equivalent to a proportion of 48%, 25 divided by 52. The number of failures is one minus P or 52% of 52, which is equal to 27. So we've got the calculations here, N times P, and n times one minus p, and we find that using the if and the and statement, you can see up above here in the formula bar, indeed, for group A, the condition passes. We have a sufficiently large sample size for group A. We do the same exact thing. Great thing is you set up a formula, you can copy across to use exactly the same for group A as you've done for group B, and we find indeed that we do as well have a sufficiently large sample size for group B. So hooray, we've passed both conditions for inference. Okay, so now that we've done this, again, an important step, we're now going to continue on with our hypothesis testing. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down here because we've got all our work here done on the same spreadsheet. Now, as we've already said, our test is a two sample Z test for proportions. 
and our hypothesis really does stem from the question that we've defined. Now, the question was, is our height success rate for seedling growth in organic soil significantly larger than the non-organically grown group? The null hypothesis, what you see here, is typically a hypothesis where it occurs, it's an event that occurs by chance. So by chance, we're going to say that both height success rates for the groups are equivalent for group A and for group B. The proportion of A is equivalent to the proportion of B. Our alternative hypothesis is the result of a real effect. And what we're claiming is, is that the organic soil group will have a higher success rate than the non-organic soil group. And that here is shown mathematically as the proportion of A. Again, the proportion of success is greater than the proportion of success in group B. OK, so we've got the hypothesis set. Now, the, the next step is we want to now compute the Z statistic that's relevant to the statistical test that we're testing. And because we've got a two-sample test that's a Z test of equal proportions, we have a Z statistic that looks, actually looks fairly complex. But the great thing is you can use the spreadsheet to break it down, break down the formula in order to achieve or compute what the Z statistic is. So I'm going to show you what that is. And here is our Z statistic. OK, so I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty here. But typically for a Z statistic, what we have is we would compare the sample mean or a sample proportion and subtract it from the population mean or population proportion. And in this case, because we're comparing two groups, it's the difference of the proportions minus the difference of the population proportions. Now, our null hypothesis states that the population proportions are equal, so the last term is equal to 0. So we're really left with the sample proportion difference. In this case, it's the sample proportion of A minus the sample proportion of B. The denominator is our standard error. And we're not going to get into that. Feel free to check out our post. It provides a little bit more detail. Uh, we also have provide more resources. So you can, if you'd like, you can dig in deeper and understand exactly the Z statistic, uh, how it was formed. But in the end, we compute the standard error by adding up the variances of both groups. And because we have a pooled sample, uh, we now exchange, you can use the p hat defined here, and that also goes then into our denominator. So what you see here is we've got all the components of the Z statistic, and we break it down into nu the numerator and denominator, and that results in a Z statistic of 3.11. So once you now have a Z statistic, we're going to now look at the Z score table, which we have here. And the way this works is you have a Z statistic of 3.11. So that means you go down here, you locate the 3.1, and then it's 3.11. So you find the last digit here. And you find here, as circled, 0.9991 represents the area here, as defined here, in the, as shown here in the picture. Now, that's great, but we're actually interested in this region right here because based off how our hypothesis was set, this is the critical region. And to do that, we take the 1 minus this figure or this area here, 0.991. So back to our spreadsheet, we looked up the value from the table, and you can see based on the formula, we took 1 minus the area, 0.9991, which resulted in a very small number. So now we've done all these, all these steps, and we now can draw our conclusion. And our conclusion is we can reject the null hypothesis. And the reason we can reject it is the p-value is extremely small. And it really doesn't matter what kind of significance level you set. If you want to look at a 0 0.05 or a 0 0.01 significance level, 0 0.0009 is very small, uh, smaller than the significance level of, say, 0 0.01. So as a result, we can conclude that we can reject the null hypothesis, which means that the proportion of plants who reach a height success rate of 50 millimeters or greater is significantly higher than the plants who are assigned the non-organic soil. OK, great. So this 
is a quick walkthrough of how we can conduct a hypothesis test and how spreadsheets can aid, can help us, can guide us in conducting this hypothesis test.